Welcome to Val Nord in Andorra. I'm in Bart Brenchens, team truck, and I'm about to enjoy the breakfast of champions. If you want to be a champion, Rob, don't eat this. This is much better for you, for a champion. Can I put some bacon on it? Oh no, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> But they say that you are what you eat, and I guess that's never truer than when it comes to a professional cyclist. Yeah, it is. Uh, it starts with your breakfast. Um, I mean, breakfast has to be healthy. It's the start of the day. Riders, they continue with a... With a <laughs> that's not healthy. <laughs> I will explain later. After their breakfast, they start training. So everything has to be in it. Uh, energy, but also nutrition, like vitamins, minerals. And a big ride early in the day most, most of the week, right? Yeah, and after they ride, they have to recover from it. So uh, for lunch, most of the time, they have like a, like a salad with some meat, with proteins for that recovery, what we said. Yeah. But they go for a second ride most of the time too. Do they? Yeah, in the afternoon. So um, <laughs> even for, for dinner, that's actually their main meal of the day. Uh, pasta has to be in it uh, or rice, like for their uh, uh, carbohydrates, the energy, what they need for the good performance. But also again, with some salad, for, for your vitamins, uh, the minerals, what we said. After all that training in a day then, do they really get to let their hair down in the evenings and have bacon, ice cream, chocolate, big desserts, <laughs> tiramisu? No, no, <laughs> they, they, they don't do it, they don't do it. Especially a meal like this, there are no nutritions in it actually. And, and also these nutritions, you, they, you need to have it for a healthy style. And riders, they have to be healthy because they have to perform on that high level. And I guess, you know, it's always a battle as well. You need to eat a lot to do what they're doing, but you don't want to get heavy, right? Because no, weight's weight, a massive factor. Yeah, weight is a massive factor, like you said, especially in mountain biking. With the steep mountains, uh, uh, performance here on the altitude, it's even a, a hard thing too. Uh, and riders, they, yeah, spend a lot of time and think about what they eat the whole yeah. day. So, it's literally no bacon on anything. Don't add bacon to your breakfast. And it's gonna be a furious and fast start. This is the crash. Oh, it looks like she's hurt her wrist there. A dramatic race. That is definitely an attack. It looks like Neff is out of this one. But it's a good gap now that Mara Wojtowska has. This is going to be an absolutely massive win. High altitude and high drama await. Today we have two races for you live on Red Bull TV. It's cross country day, the men come up later. We start though with the women. Joining me is a man who always takes my breath away with his excellent commentary, Bart Brenchens. Bart, are you enjoying it up here? Yeah, this is one of my favorite races, uh, 2,000 meters above sea level uh, with the mountains around us. It's such a beautiful place. And I heard you say 2,000 meters, then this is an altitude race. What does that mean to the riders? Lack of oxygen, uh, that means it for the riders. And uh, to perform on this uh, high altitude uh, level, it's really hard for the riders. Uh, but also the course, it's really hard on its climbers course. And with the heat, the, the sun, it's, uh, it's going to be even more <laughs> harder for you're them. Not, you're not painting a very picked pr Painting a very pretty picture for the riders. It is going to be tough up here. Of course, we come here straight from Val de Sole, another tough race as well. How exciting was it though? Yeah, it was a really great race in uh, Val de Sole with uh, five women were, which were fighting for that first place. With one and a half lap to go, Maya Wozowska, she made an attack, uh, already several riders did, but she made it till the finish line. It was actually amazing how she did it and she took her uh, win again. Amazing to see her win after so many years, actually. That might be the sweetest taste win yet though it was six years in the making Maya Blozowska 34 14 years of them successful in racing mountain bikes I don't know since my last uh, victory in the World Cup race uh, is like six years so it was in 2012 uh, but actually the first one that I won was I think I in 2004 Maybe the next win won't take her six more years. Uh, the one now in Val di Sole was maybe the more unexpected, but also uh, it's the one that I'm almost like proud the most because I think I wasn't the strongest rider from the field that day. 
but I just used all the opportunities and I used uh, the cards that I had that day to, to play the game the best I could and, uh, and I had victory thanks to that. That's really steep there, look at it. Uh, Wojtowska, the fastest lap of the race goes to her though. That. I was just like trying to see how they are racing and they were fighting for the position all the time, like Pauline, uh, Yolanda and Emily. And sometimes I was um, losing some time on the upheels because I was just weaker. But then I noticed that anyway, I can catch them soon on the technical parts when uh, they had to slow down anyway. So Mark Wojtowska looking good there at the front now. She's won here in the past. Look how much time she's pulled out. The 2010 winner on this course. I was just thinking that, OK, if I don't try, then I never know. And if they will catch me, then I can try again on the next lap. And, uh, and then uh, I saw that immediately I got a few seconds of gap and I just went full gas the next lap. I'm happy that I was not looking back because uh, when I saw the replay, the girls were like all the time, just a few seconds behind me. And everyone fighting to go with her, all up out of the saddles there. Maja Wojtowska takes the win! A fantastic result for the rider from Poland. Yeah, I would love to win as many as I can, and for sure now I'm, uh, I'm really motivated, and uh, the victory in Valdisola gave me really like, a good kick and uh, a boost of uh, motivation and confidence. So winning doesn't come down to just the legs, Maya using her head as well. Great to see her again enjoying the taste of champagne. In stark contrast, the woman that went into that race leading the overall World Cup, Annika Langvad, couldn't have had a much worse day. Yeah, shortly after the start of that uh, women's uh, category, there was a huge crash uh, with uh, several riders were involved with that. Uh, Linda Indergant, uh, Annie Lars, Anna Tauber, but also Annika Langvad, uh, she had a really bad crash and she couldn't continue her race, she quit the race immediately and um, we thought uh, the injury was very bad, but it wasn't too bad. It was a tough day for her. Here's Annika then with an update on that injury. Yeah, got some ice on it and went to the medics and I was honestly sure it was broken because it was super painful. Luckily, the, the x-rays came out nicely and showed us nothing was broken. It was just a huge hematoma, um, very swollen, very sore. Um, so I just had to, to keep it very yeah, easy. Um, yeah, so that was basically it. Um, I, from there, I was really not sure what to do. So I decided just to take it day by day. Um, and it actually ended up improving day by day very quickly, luckily. Um, and now it feels, it feels much better. So I'm very optimistic for the weekend. Well, all sounds like she's on the mend and be a contender today. Before she crashed out of last Sunday's race, she won her third XCC, her third short track race of the year, unbeaten in that discipline. It's a new discipline that's been introduced to World Cup racing this year. It carries points and start positions for today's race. Here's what happened in Andorra on Friday. Short track racing and high altitude, a combination which can be a real challenge for the riders' bodies. This one here, it's totally different, it's high altitude, so I think we can expect everything. Uh, I feel really good after last Sunday, so yeah, I will fight for it. Inspired by her cross-country win in Val di Sole, Vlojoska took the lead right from the start. So far, all three short track races went to Denmark's Annika Langwart, but there was a question mark over her form after the crash and her injured wrist from Val di Sole. I mean, I had a little bit of a chaotic week, uh, trying to figure out if I could even start the race. Uh, luckily, I, my hand improved day by day, and uh, now it's actually only a little bit sore, but I, I can easily ride my bike. Langwart took control of the race during lap three. Of seven. But the Swiss riders Alessandra Keller and Yolanda Neff pushed hard to break Langwart's grip on the race. Neff managed to open a gap to the rest of the field, but it was too early and she paid the price. I should have probably started to overtake her earlier, but then, uh, yeah, Alessandra was in the front in the perfect place. Like, I was in the front a few laps earlier, and that's how. I got a bit of a gap and then uh, Alessandra did it perfectly well in the last lap. 
It was her fellow countrywoman Alessandra Keller who attacked on the penultimate lap and rode away to secure her first ever short track World Cup win. already a good season and a few good short tracks and I know here's altitude I raced on a full suspension so you never know what's gonna happen and yeah I'm totally happy. Three-time short track winner Annika Langwart sprinted to second while Barbara Benko completed the top three. World Cup leader Yolanda Neff finished in fourth. Eight different nations in the top ten with the first short track win for a Swiss rider. So, the first short track defeat for Langbad, the first win for Alessandra Keller. Let's have a look at the World Cup then, with those points from Friday added. Yeah, Yolanda Neff, uh, Annika Langvat, uh, neck and neck, only 17, 27 points in between. Uh, and Alexandra Keller with her win on the third place right now. So, plenty to fight for in the overall World Cup standing. Here's today's track. It's time for some high altitude racing. The cross country course in Andorra measures 3.8 kilometers and has a vertical climb of 206 meters. With the start being on 1,901 meter, it is the highest race of the season. So air will be thin. A new start area is followed by a newly added climb. Pyrenees area, an uphill with 17% gradient. It's easy to lose traction, but an ideal place to overtake. GoPro Hill, a rocky uphill and downhill section where riders need to find the right line to carry speed and keep the flow. Mercedes-Benz area. This climb stands like a wall in front of the rider. The longest climb tests a rider's power and fitness. Feed zone. Refueling the body is essential. Don't miss a bottle, as this can affect things dramatically. La Masana, the forest. Flowy and fast single track downhill to recover a bit, followed by a technical uphill. Andorra Telecom Corner. Three switchback climbs where the right line can decide who goes first into the last few hundred meters. Well, Bart, it's always a tough track, we know that. You say it's a climber's course, even more so this year with the changes. Yeah, there have been a, a few changes compared from the course from last year. Uh, they added a new climb to it, but that's not the only thing. We knew uh, the wall, how we call it, after that off-camber descent. I've pushed my bike up it a few times. It's a really hard one, and also the riders, they will struggle here on the, that high altitude even more than normally. I mean, let's talk about the high altitude and the high temperature. I remember watching riders finish this race and almost be unable to even do the finish line interviews. You know, we've seen Yolanda Neff nearly collapsing up here and it was the same on Friday in the short track. How hard is today going to be? Yeah, definitely it's going to be really hard for them. Uh, the lack of oxygen, that's the main fact, I think, but also the climb, of course, what this course is. Is this the hardest race of the year? Physically, definitely it is. Uh, technically, I wouldn't say it, but uh, physically, really it is. And riders who did altitude training, they do, do really well, I guess. I guess that might be the, uh, the edge they need. Who's going to win then, Bart, today? Who's going to come out on top up here? To predict uh, the women's scores, the women's race is always difficult. Yeah. But with the win from last year over here, Jana Billemoyne. The defending World Cup overall winner from 2017. Find out if he's right, stay with us. Round five of the Masai. Mercedes-Benz UCI Cross Country World Cup is about to get the wheels rolling. The commentary available in English, German and Portuguese. Me and the Bartman will see you after this. Pump up your tires for the world of Red Bull. The best live events, feature films, and shows. Make it your world and download the app for free. Red Bull TV is available on all your devices, anywhere, at any time. Go beyond the ordinary. Get the app now.
Andorra is a landlocked microstate nestled high in the Pyrenees Mountains between France and Spain. Its capital, Andorra La Vella, being the highest in Europe. There's lots of tax free shopping here with over 300 days of sunshine. It's also a perfect spot for some summer mountain biking. Valnor Bike Park has over 40 kilometers of downhill, cross country, and enduro trails, meaning there is something for everyone. <laughs> And it is a glorious day here in the Pyrenees. Sun's out. Pretty hot for the riders there is Yannabella Minor then. You're enough from last year. Your pick for today? I hope she can do well. She loves this course. She's done well here in the past, yeah. Of course, so let's see what she can do today. Coming back still from injury. Pauline Pauline Fran Prevot on the third row. She had a technical problem in that short track from last Friday. That uh, that's why she's not on the first two rows. A few minutes away from the start. Let's go to the front row then. Maya Wojtowska, last week's winner. Runner up in last year's World Cup Series to Jana Bellamoina. Woodruff, front row start after that excellent finish in uh, the XCC, or short track as it's actually called. The abbreviation by the UCC is, uh, is by the UCI is XCC. Kate Courtney. So two Americans on the front row today. From Canada. Hi guys. Emily Batty. Right on form at the moment. Second last weekend. How long will it take to have her first win? She's definitely interesting. Building up again towards towards it. Here's Yolanda Neff. Third last week. Only the reigning world champion, Yolanda. Hungary, Barbara Brenko. Fifth place in Alpstadt and a great result in Friday's short track race. Sees her on the front row. And Annika Langvad with a number two plate on her bike. Second overall now in this year's World Cup. Big fight today for her after having to miss that race last week. She'll want the number one plate back on the front of her bike as soon as she can get it. And this is the winner of short track on Friday. Alessandra Keller riding for the Thomas RN Racing Team from Switzerland. Second row then. Anna Tuba, Anna, excuse me, Anna Tauber. Anna Tauber. Catherine Sternman in the gang there. Yenabella Moiner, of course, the winner here a year ago. Fran Prevot right with her. Annie Last not starting today, actually. Going to have this one off. Try and recover. Hasn't been feeling too good. Leah Davison. And let's go down to the start. Alessandra Keller is with Rick. Alessandra, a big win in the short track uh, on Friday evening. What's that done for your confidence today? Um, for sure, it was a great success for me, for the whole team, and for everyone who helped me. But um, today is a different game. It will start from the beginning. XCO and XCC are different, so we will see. What are your hopes for the race? For sure, um, to deliver a good race, to be constant, and to get a good result. Alessandra, thanks very much. Good luck today. Thank you. Six laps for the women, but it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, different disciplines, what uh, Alessandra Keller said. Cross country, much longer, longer climbs, different course. But for the confidence for her, it means a lot. And on the first row. And, yeah, just two days ago, she beat most of the riders in this field. So, about to get underway, then around round of five. Here we go, six straight laps. Will they 
be slower off the line, I was going to ask you, but because of the altitude, it doesn't look like you're landing there immediately to the front. Yeah, definitely. The start, it's, uh, as always, it's very important. Uh, they had a new climb in this course. This one it is. It's wide open, uh, easy to overtake each other, so riders say we'll do that as well. It's a fair start, I would say. Last week, we had a big crash immediately after the start. Something goes oh. wrong there, too. In the middle of the pack. Thankfully, a lot slower than the crash we saw last week. Yeah, that's that's a good thing. Uh, but the uh, riders, they're very close together, especially in the beginning of the race. So wide handlebars, they can touch each other quickly. Always dangerous. Yolanda Neves leading. The usual tactic, but always, hard off the line. Always fast in the start. Kate Courtney right there with her. Myers was off scar. Also with the yellow number plate, same as Yolanda Neves has. The cross teammates. So, Wojtowska there in third place as they come down this dual lane to the bottom. They're going to go back up straight away. The two different lines that they can take. It seems to be that inner line, uh, the most left from us, it's the fastest. But uh, it helps and avoids some uh, yeah, traffic in the beginning of the race. Emily Batty, fourth place for her then at the moment. Right where she needs to be, here comes Keller. The number six. Aggressively trying to bridge that gap. And there is Langbad, the number two, so definitely in touch there. But pulling Fran Provo with her as well, so she's come through nicely. Yeah, a very fast start from uh, Yolanda Neff. A small gear pushing it right now. It's, it's very difficult to... Uh, to push a big gear on these steep climbs uh, and especially on cadence. altitude, yeah, notice high me, cadence. Notice me faster than everyone around her. It's not that much power what she's pushing, but with the high cadence she goes really fast. Fran Provo looks like she's on the move as well. Now, don't forget that Pauline Fran Provo actually became the world champion here so it in means 2015. She, it means she loves this course, she loves this place, she loves to perform here on altitude. And also Langford, a good start from her as well. Yana Bella Moina going through right now, number 14. There's Elizabeth Brandau, the number nine. Here they come then into the woods for the first time. Nice bit of shade. Yeah, it's a bit cooler between the, for in the, between the trees in the forest. Pace is fierce, Bart. Yeah. Are you surprised at this with the altitude or? Yeah, a bit, but, yeah. Uh, but that's how it is. The adrenaline is that high, so they give everything they have. And also the positions, they are so important, especially after uh, it comes a bit further in the race. Uh, at, at that long uh, descent to the bottom of that uh, wall climb, as we call it, it's very hard uh, and actually yeah, almost impossible for the riders to overtake each other. So here it's still possible, but it, it, yeah, shortly it will be uh, impossible to overtake each other. And they have to sit where they are. Really strong start from Kate Courtney. Langvat here at the number two. And here already they have to put a foot on the ground. On the Taubo, Jana Bielamonia here at the number 14. Laura Benko besides her, they have to slow down a little bit, they have to find their positions. Got to be frustrating, hasn't it? Knowing that the leaders are riding away while you're stuck in traffic. You don't want to give any any time away at all, do you? No, no, not at all. Uh, and it feels really uh, yeah, bad if you have to slow down because of a rider in front of you. Kate Courtney, great start for her. Coming in off her best World Cup finish a week ago in Val de Soli, her best elite world. Uh, cup finish, I should say, seventh place for her. And a strong start. She has done uh, altitude training in the US, what I know, and that will help her today. The under 23 World Cup winner from last year, Kate Courtney. This descent will uh, love Yolanda. Look at the time she's pulled on everyone. It's a tactic that might work, but if she can uh, keep extending that gap on the descent. Yeah. Definitely, that's her tactic for today. Stoska goes through in fifth. Keller, Tauber, Fran Prevo. Gun Rita Dala there. She's been ill all week, Bart. Yeah, she was struggling with her stomach in the beginning of the week, uh, so that caused a lot of energy, the power, what you need to have in your body, but uh, it seems to be uh, not too bad. She had a good start so far. In the Yolanda. Top Sorry, Bart. Yolanda absolutely, well, getting a kick there. Gone on this descent, this big off camber descent. It is technical and it will she will love it, right? Yeah, with our hardtail bike, drop a seat post, what I can see so far. Looks like that. But she's really fast. 
And this is the bottom of that very steep ski slope. And she will use a small gear. This is called the wall. Believe me, it's like hitting a wall. It, it is so, so steep. It goes nicely for 10 meters, but still you have to do a few hundred <laughs> meters more. So it's, it's Omar, awful. interesting to see you land there on a hardtail bike. I would have thought a full suspension bike would have been bare on this track. Is that because um, they have to use the same bike from short track to here, do you think? Or? Yeah, but also this is a, a, a typical climber's course, so weight, uh, the bike weight means a lot for the riders. Uh, they have to carry it on on all these mountains, like uh, Kate Courtney has to do it with her fully. Uh, Emily Betty, it looks like she tries to over yeah. the here. Difficult to get so, off that racing line and overtake, you know. Yeah, and, and Yolanda Neve as well, she's uh, technically one of the best riders. Uh, even with that hardtail bike, she's probably the fastest in the descent. So cresting it first is Yolanda Neff. Kate Courtney, specialized full suspension bike, second place. From San Francisco, just outside actually in the USA. Kate Courtney lives in the shadow of Mount Tam, where mountain biking began, where it was actually invented all those years ago. Emily Batty out of the saddle, pushing it hard here on this climb. At the top it's a bit less steep, but it keeps on going, that climb. Overtaking Kate Courtney. Tauber up to fourth, with number five. Just ahead of Annika Langvad. They both had a, a, a bad crash last week. Uh, Tauber, she could uh, continue after that. Uh, Langvad quit the race. Tauber injured on her finger too. Langvad a wrist injury. But both back and luckily. And good to see her them back already. Yolanda Neff, Emily Batty, Kate Courtney on three. Came back together a little bit on that climb, bar. And the tarb on four, Langvat fifth. Keller, the winner from the short track on sixth position right now. Maya Zazowska behind her, Gunrita, the most experienced rider, the veteran. And she's done well up here, Bart. Second in 2016, Gunrita, so she can go well at altitude. The most successful World Cup race of all time. You, you'd have to say she can go well anywhere. It is. But she knows how to be prepared for, for a race like this. Back on the climb they go. That steep climb from the short track. The hard one. It hurts. It hurt the legs. Each lap again. Back into the forest. Riders still closely together. And Yolanda never still leading. Emily Betty back on a reel. Try to recover all after all these little climbs. Emily Batty second again last week, but she's going to be hungry for that first World Cup win. The form seems to be with her. And a fair start for Yolanda Neff. As ever. It's a tactic we see a lot from Yolanda. It doesn't always pay off. I guess Friday was an example of that in short track. Flying down these descents. Look at the pace of Neff around these turns. Emily Batty doing really well to go with her. She's the current leader, but uh, she's wearing that uh, world champion jersey with the rainbow stripes instead of that leader's jersey of the World Cup. Which I guess is an option if you're world champion, right? I don't know what the rules are, actually. No. Good news, she's the world champion, and probably that means a bit more compared to wearing that uh, leader's jersey, which is probably nice too. Tauber, back on the wheel of Kate Courtney. A group of four. Prevot, not that far behind these. Oh, Langvat, there she is. Keller. Hot pace, lap one. Tauber already up to fourth. Langvad in fifth. Where is Pauline Fran Prevot? Zhovska seventh. Dala in eighth then. Missing Pauline Ferrand-Provo, there she is, together with Jana Bilomoyna, the number 14, Jana Bilomoyna. Pauline Ferrand-Provo behind her, national champion from France. So probably a lot of fans for her. 
here on the side of the course too. Andorra in between the mountains of Spain and France. Absolutely stunning setting up here. The only problem is the lack of oxygen at the top of the Lamasana bike park here. Except that everything is beautiful over here. Yeah, it's not too bad in commentary. A lot easier than ride when you're on your bike, eh, but It's very hard to ride your bike over here. It is a big difference, right? I mean, to, to relay it to people at home, it's instantly noticeable. It's, yeah, I mean, there are a few different things that you can do. You can, or you have to prepare yourself for with an altitude training, but also you can come here on the latest moment yeah. and, and try and perform well. And that's even that's the, diff, the different tactic what riders can use as well. So they sleep low, they come to the race and perform for one day on the highest level. And that's possible too. That is possible. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's a different uh, system. Because the body hasn't started getting tired trying to adapt. Is that, yeah, is that it's kind more of like it? that. Yeah. It looks like that. Incredible, really. So Gunnery Adala right there at the moment. Perhaps the benefit of not taking part on Friday's short track race for Gunnery going to be more apparent here at altitude. Yeah, definitely. Harder to recover yesterday. Yeah, it's a, it's a short race, but the intensity what the riders have to deliver in such a short period, it's so high. And to recover from that here on altitude, it's even more difficult than sea level. So that's why a few of the riders uh, took the decision not to participate in that short track, especially when it comes for the overall standing. And like Jana Bilomoyne as well, for her, it's, it's the intensity is it's a bit too high. So she decided not to race and yeah. try to be in a better shape for that cross country race, what we are seeing right now. Same Gorita did. Maybe it'll pay off. Maybe it won't. We'll see over the upcoming Five laps very shortly now, coming towards the end, through the red zone they go. I think the whole course, it's a red zone, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Not only this part. I think you're probably right up here, Bart. In the red the whole way round, on the rev limiter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> and even with the sun out, it's very hot. Luckily, the riders have several paths into the forest. So riders also, they have to take a lot of uh, fluid to themselves, drinks. This leading group is coming back together, there goes Alessandra Keller. Last week we had a group of five, right now a group of eight. Yeah, it's even more interesting. The World Cup leader comes into view first. Emily Batty signalling. New glasses. glasses. Yeah, uh, probably the, I mean, the difference in between Riding on these paths or under the trees, it's so huge. So that's probably she likes to have different glasses. Oh, uh, exactly. The, the details, Bart. It is, yeah. Yep. Water Interesting. For, yeah, no water no for Yana, on the top no, of that no, yeah. no top. Yeah. Just going to cool herself off with that one. Fran Provoke, third overall in this year's World Cup at the moment as well, goes through. Rita Michielsen from Belgium. Linda Indergaan in the red, the number 13. Chloe Woodruff in the middle of them. So, out onto lap two goes the leading pack. Keller looking like she might be struggling a little bit with this pace. Yeah, but not that far no. behind them. So, a group of eight. After them, Jana Bellemoyne with Pauline ferrand Prevo. 25 nations represented in this women's race today. So, Fran Prevo, 26 seconds back. Can she catch that up? It's still possible. I mean, uh, a fast start on high altitude might give you the up yeah, to blow up uh, easily. Yeah. So, a, a slower start isn't that bad. Especially Lucky at clever. the beginning of the race, to be careful with that. Barbara Benko goes through. Irina Kalantieva. She finished second on the World Championships over here a couple of right. years ago. Yes, she did. It was Jana Bellamoyna actually that took the bronze medal at those 2015 World Championships. Leah Davison. Actually, Catherine Pendle, her teammate, still absent with injury. I believe she'll be back in action uh, when we get to Montserrat in a few weeks' time. Raisa from Brazil, Raisa Gulau, number 17. Mm -hmm. 
Eva Lechner from the Cliff team besides her. Oh, oh no! For Betty. It's a chain off by the looks of it. Yeah, and even she's riding with a chain guide in front. That's unlucky, but it is. Yeah, it's, it's a very bumpy course. We had a little bit of rain in the beginning of the week, which actually makes the course even better. But uh, with the dry conditions from the last couple of days, the course, it's very bumpy. So immediately after that descent... Oh, it's on the climb as well. Maybe just changing gear, it jumped. Hard yeah. to see from there. Yeah. But it's like what you said. It's just come off. Yeah, what a shape. Yeah. And now on mountain bikes, you're really unlucky to have a chain come off because the teeth on the front ring are narrow, then wide, then narrow, yep. then wide. That's the system. To go between the wide and narrow plates on the of the chain, of course, and um, a slightly deeper profile as well. And honestly, I ride my bike with no chain guard, no chain guide whatsoever. No, it's and I don't think it's ever fallen off. No, it's true. It's actually it's not necessary. But it's what you said, yeah, the wrong moment. With yeah. Yeah, bumping the chain and, and shifting. Yeah, that's right. Th then it still might possible. I mean, on this level, how they are acting, how they are racing. There are always things which can go wrong. Gunrita in the second place. Is she in for another win? Another World Cup win? Long way to go, yeah, I suppose. Big names at the front for sure as well. Top six, a group of six riders, Annika Langvat. Annika Langvad looking like she's moving forwards pretty effortlessly there. Okay, Gorni beside her. The last rider of this group right now. And it's Gunrita who's taking the lead. Interesting. What will Gunrita do today then? That's what you said. She didn't do the short track on Friday to save some energy, but she didn't feel good as well in the beginning of the week. Probably that was the main reason not to participate on Friday. The 70 World Cup podium for Gunnery Atala, the most successful World Cup racer there's ever been. The winner of 29, wouldn't she like to make it 30? She is actually supposed to be retiring at the end of the year. Around 30 would be nice before that. I don't believe she's going to retire. How can she retire when she still leads yeah, World Cup races? There's no reason to do it. <laughs> And this is the pinnacle of mountain biking. There is really nowhere you can go from this except kind of to other events that she wants to do, though, more kind of uh, stage, stage races, races yeah. you know. Yeah. How long has she been on the World Cup part? It's since the early 1990s, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, I've been retro in the team actually in 1995. So uh, from then on, she already won World Cups. Amazing. Looks like she's a bit slower than, Gurita, than uh, Yolanda Nav here in the descent, Gurita. Most are. At least her style is a bit more relaxed, and that sometimes it looks like slower as well, even when it is not. Okay, Courtney is struggling with that high pace of Gunrita. And Libetti after that chain accident that she had. Coming back to the leaders. Gunrita, hardtail bike two for her. Not going too badly on that descent at all, though. We've seen that part of the course be horrendous. Thankfully, it's not wet. The riders can really struggle with it if it is. But because of the dry from the last couple of days, actually, this descent, it's, it's going more rough. A lot of breaking holes. It's hard to see from here, but uh, the riders definitely they will uh, see it and, and use it and feel it as well. So Gunrita means business today. Small gap. Her first World Cup win bar. 1996, 22 years ago. It's absolutely astonishing. It is. It's incredible. 22 incredible. seasons. I can't believe it, actually. Yeah, How no, anyone... Normally, like, a sports career takes you 10 years, yeah. 15 years, but 22 years long. Well, you know, there's a career, and then there's being right at the top. And, Gunrita absolutely at the top. That's 22 years since her first World Cup win. I mean, you know, she was riding bicycles before that. On the Merida, pushing hard on this climb. Neff able to go with her. Yeah, looks like even she can go a, a bit faster because she's that close on her rear wheel, besides that rear wheel even. Tauber on three. There you land Neff goes. Can go quicker on this steep climb. And Anna Tabler, you know, finger, how is that now? 
Yeah, not it's, bothering her or not? It, it does a little bit. Uh, she had a special uh, tape around it to uh, avoid the, the vibrations, which goes to the bike into her it hand. Broke? It's definitely broken, I would say. It looks like that, but uh, she hasn't been in the hospital. She wouldn't go through it. Uh, she said it doesn't help to recover quicker, so she tries and uh, to avoid the pain. But uh, when it comes to a race like this, probably the adrenaline will uh, push her forwards. But definitely, she has a small, yeah, we, we adjust a little bit on her handlebar for a better preparation and a better feeling on her hands. But it's it's painful, she said. Fran Prevost now 52 seconds back. So the gap opening up to Pauline Fran Prevost as the leaders come whistling down this descent on the grass. Yolanda looking pretty content there at the moment. Yeah, 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 with the drop of seat posts. Pushing hard here. The speed in the descent. Gunrita, I don't think she's on a drop of seat posts. Ah, oh, she is too. She had a drop of seat post too. Big, big help. And less or more weight than a full suspension bike, I wonder. It is, yeah. I think uh, a little bit less. Yeah. Most compared to a normal, it's about uh, three, 250, 300 grams difference. So not that much. That's all it is. Incredible. That's all it is, yeah. And even wow. they're coming with a light of versions too. In the next couple of years. Neff back to the front. Small gear. High cadence. Remember Neff leading this year's World Cup, and only two races after this one. So. But Neff will push hard again here in that descent, but yeah, she did it uh, in a short track race as well. Neff 25, Gunrita Dala 45, 20 years between them. There goes Tauber. That's a lot. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Mom and daughter. Could be. Could be. Betty, can she come back to the leaders? Takes some water from that bottle this time, gets rid of it as she goes into the trees. These riders don't want to carry any extra weight bar. They don't feel they need her. Huh? No, and even probably even when, the bottle. Bottle, when the bottle it's uh, empty, why right? should you take it with you? The fans, they would love it to have it. That's true. But you see how difficult it is for her as well after that uh, yeah, technical problem that she had earlier this lap. It takes so much time, it takes so much energy of you as well to close the gap. You have yeah. to go faster than the leader. So on, on this level, it's really difficult. But she did a really good race last week where she finished second. Lovely flowing trail back down. Looking back to her chain. Yeah, well, she's not confident. No, that's the trouble now. You're going to be wondering what's up with it. And you can hear as she comes sliding in those, those turns how much chain slap there is, you know. I mean, of course it can come off, but in, these, in this day and age, it's pretty rare. It is, yeah. But you need to have your, the confidence in your bike. Yeah. Uh, using, the, using her hand on that tree, on the table. It's allowed. So Neff now with a seven second lead. But we know that she's the quickest, descent. certainly one of the quickest, yeah. very quickest on the descent. That's why she loves to be in that first position. I think she's feeling good today though, Yolanda. Yes. Yeah, no nothing. sign of blowing up. She's uh, not at all. Head down. Yep. Composed. Not confident. O not only that first lap where she was uh, leading most of the time, but also here right now, second lap. Really fast here in that flowy descent. Not too steep, but high speeds in between the trees. Tauber back on the wheel of Gunrita almost. A few seconds left. These corners are very difficult, these switchbacks. Very sharp and steep. Gunrita, second place. Hotel bike for her. Working hard around that turn as well. Tauber right there now as well. On three. Tauber did a lot of weeks of altitude training too before Valdi Sol, and also she has been sleeping here on altitude uh, the last couple of days right. in between the two races of Valdi Sol and Andorra. Erika Langvad, a little way back, but 
still early in the stages of this race. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, everything is still possible. We knew... Uh, Maybe it could change easily, more easily up here at altitude, is that? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to blow up, it's pretty easily to, to is it? <laughs> happen. But we know from Yolanda, she's always flying in the beginning of the race. Yeah. And I hope she can uh, continue with this high pace. That is showing us just how steep that switchback is. Has to get up out of the saddle for a couple of pedal strokes. Betty already back to Langvat. What's more left for her? How frustrating for her. It is, yeah, definitely it is. She needs to just kind of try and settle back down. She was, and move the, forward. She was in the top five for the whole race last week. The Cooper five, several attacks we saw. Now it's more spread out. Probably the, the conditions right now are more difficult. More climbing on this course. Physically a harder course, I think, too. And also the altitude. It looks hard, but I mean, those grassy climbs, are, they're never easy, are they? No, they, they look much, they are much steeper than they look like. Yeah. <laughs> Especially these ski slopes. It's like riding, riding on a thick carpet. <laughs> it's like that, yeah. So Gunnery Adala chasing at the moment then. Second place. On the top, one three. Telba chasing the 2004 Olympic champion, Gunrita. Took that Olympic gold in Athens. Yeah, on the top, only 22 years old. Gunrita, 45. Amazing. And Anne Telba actually comes from, I, you know, I knew she did speed skating, but the other day, I don't know how it happened, but she ended up measuring my thigh with a tape measure and uh, I was a little I was only a little bit about two centimeters speed, ska speed skaters have, have that's the, the biggest uh, that's what she said. Legs. I was like you're not gonna have a leg like mine and she was like speed skater they do yeah it was close yeah, yeah. yeah it's close yeah. bearing in mind I'm almost twice her height and probably even in winter time probably the, her legs are even bigger compared to her uh, during the mountain bike season because she trains still on the ice a lot does she she does a lot of uh, races uh, speed skating oh, races uh, during the whole winter yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. She, she doesn't ride her bike that much in winter time. Really? And it crosses over nicely, the fitness. Yeah, it the is. The muscles. Yeah, yeah. I guess they're both all legs, really. So Nine Taub seconds back to Tauber, excuse me. Tauber on three. Langvad, 10 seconds back from Tauber. Wustowska, fifth at the moment, last week's winner. So Neff, the current leader, Langvad, second in the overall standings. Pauline Fram for Paulina Fran Provoba, the uh, 2015 world champion on this court, looks a long way back. Anyway, we're going to take a break now. Stay with us, though. We'll be right back with the action from here in Andorra. Experience the story of one of the most successful mountain bikers in history. Nino Schurter, a mountain biker's hunt for glory. Now available on Red Bull TV. the search for the ultimate Enduro rider. The most prestigious, famous, and feared Enduro races. The adrenaline's pumping. The perfect balance of speed, technique, and courage. It's extreme. So tough on the body. Absolute madness. Enduro Super Series Season 2018 on Red Bull TV. Welcome back to Andorra. Here in the Pyrenees, round five of the Mercedes-Benz UCI Cross Country World Cup. Yolanda Neff leads at the moment. Gunnery to Dalla there on the number eight bike right with her. And you can see actually the top five, top six riders Still close together in this race. It's uh, unbelievable how close together they still are. Emily Betty, she had a technical problem uh, a, a lap ago. She tries to come back to uh, Langvada Majesovska, where she already has been uh, a little bit further back. But uh, right now, looks like she's coming back to these two. Also, impressive ride of Gunrita Dahle so far. She came back again to Yolanda Neff, who's still leading after two laps. Emily Batty. Perhaps they'll fire her up about the fact that she's had to come back through. 
Yeah, and also it motivates yourself as well. If you can come back after that uh, technical problem, you knew uh, that you are strong and faster. But an impressive ride for uh, Gunrita so far. Really impressive. Dala chasing that 30th World Cup win, pushing herself further into the history book. So Emily Batty looking like she was going around the outside as we go back to the leaders. Neff, Gunrita. Gunrita looks like she's out for a Sunday afternoon jaunt now. <laughs> Much more easier than uh, the ride of Yolanda. Looks like that, but that's also style, her that? experience, her style. Pushing a bigger gear on her age. Tower on the third position in between the trees. But Yolanda knows as well, uh, after this little climb, the most technical part of the course will start, where she needs to be in the first position because she's so fast over here. So Julian Absalom watches on. Looking for Pauline ferrand prevot Giving his uh, girlfriend plenty of encouragement. There she is. Not looking good at all. No, surprising. Small talk between these two. 11th place at the moment. But she doesn't have the power. Not today, Julian, the most successful male cross-country racer there has ever been, who recently retired, actually. So uh, good to see him still here, but and yeah. still uh, very much involved with the racing, with Pauline, of course, and with his own team now. It is, yeah. Yolanda Neff, Gunrita Dale. The second most successful, if you take into the account, Julian's record as well. 29 Cold World Cup wins for her, tied actually with Nino Scherzer, both going for win number 30 today. Four seconds, nothing in it at the moment at the front then. Tauber comes down through the trees. Difficult technical descent there. Yeah, it's a very uh, difficult uh, descent, what you said. Uh, different lines, riders can choose. Different line for uh, Emily Betty, taking it more inside. Emily Galangvat this. 25 seconds back now, Batty. Would have been a lot less without that chain falling off. And a very rocky descent as well. Langvat 30 seconds back, but... Is she possible for her to take the win from that position? Is she kind of saving herself because of the altitude? Or that will be really difficult for her. Will it? To yeah, it's back. not a tactical decision. You don't. No, think? no, I don't think so. Uh, we knew uh, she had a yeah health injury last yes. week when, after that crash. That costs a lot of energy for your body too. It's not only uh, that you have to recover from uh, from a race, but also if you have an injury, it costs so much energy for your body to recover from that. I mean, there's only. 27 points between uh, Yolanda Neff, who we're looking at, and Annika Langvad, second in the points chase at the moment. Langvad's not going to want to give too much away at this point of the season. Only Monsensan and then Labrest left after this race. The short track, though, is another factor now that we know Langvad is simply brilliant at. Yes, she's very strong in that. And can take 125 points at both of those. But still, the cross-country race uh, with, with uh, 250 points for a win means uh, a little bit more. And it counts much harder. Gunrita pushing a little bit bigger gear than Yolanda does. Struggling with this hard climb. Unbelievably steep that climb there. But still in the second place. Almost the smallest gear she can ride. See that big 12-speed cassette block on the back of that bike? Oh, she has a little bit more left, I uh, see. Not, 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 not at all the smallest gear. Nowhere near bottom bar. You'll be in trouble for that. I think I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the speed these women uh, can ride is incredible fast. Yeah. Phenomenal. Look at the backdrop as well here. In the Principality of Andorra, Neff already on her way back down. The seat's been lowered. Taking a second there just to try and relax. Flying in this descent. That's a big gap now. Is this a good opportunity for Yolanda to go? Is she going to go or is she just going to carry on as she is? I mean, she yeah. is literally riding away with it at the moment. Definitely this. Uh, 
and also she can uh, slow down a little bit and try to recover and if you can do it in a race it helps so much in general in total actually it means you will be faster after each lap again if you have a little bit of time for recovery and it looks like Yolanda is moving away on the table on the third place Brandau 13th for her at the moment, so another strong ride from Germany. Barbara Benko of the Ghost team. Why one rider sat down, one why stood up? What's the difference there, Bart? Sometimes you have to uh, get out of the saddle to push a little bit harder, but it's really hard for your upper legs. You will feel it more. Like here, the riders do. This is a short climb, so they can. Get out of the saddle and sprint to the top. Emily Betty, strong rider for her, she does it as well. Sword Look at that. Sit. Batty is charging back towards the front of this race, the Canadian. But it hurts the upper legs. It hurts the upper legs so much if you are riding out of the saddle all the time. Does it? You see the men, they do it more than women's do. They have more power, so they use that as well. But uh, if the climb's getting longer, they will sit on the saddle and I'm pushing a smaller gear. Different line from Tauber, must be, because I thought Betty overtook her on that climb. But it's a small descent after that climb. Very steep one. There's Mara Stowska in the white. Former world champion from 2010, actually at the venue we go to next in Montsenan. A teammate from Yolanda Neff, who's leading this race. Tauber flying. Whistling down this descent. Not much of a break, these downhills. They don't last long. So there's a chasing pack at the moment. Nice ah. with the number 17 on her bike from Brazil. 21st place for her. Goes past Klino Godak. Excuse me, 31st place for her. Oh, that is a brutal, exposed climb as well. Look at it. There's nothing nice about that climb. <laughs> it's not even nice <laughs> not to look all. at. <laughs> not at all. Tauber. 27 seconds back. Batty goes through. She lost 15 seconds. It was stopped, actually, for 15 seconds during that, uh, when that chain came off. It's a little bit more than that, though, Bart. By the time that she'd uh, rolled to a halt, got going again. Yeah, but also uh, to find your rhythm back here. Yeah, but that's also, the big thing, that's right? That's the right moment. Uh, Yolanda Neff pushed the pedals really hard and tried to get away from Gunnarita, what she did. So there's a real fight going on in, uh, in this race. And it's Yolanda Neff who's leading at the moment. A good gap now for, for Yolanda Neff out front, the World Cup leader. Emily Batty, Maja Zazowska. There she is. Three times, an under 23 world champion. The reigning elite world champion. She's been marathon world champion, European champion. There's not much that Yolanda hasn't done. I suppose Olympics really the last box to tick for her. That's true. She hasn't won and an still only medal so far. Still only 25 years old. A very talented rider. She has probably the best skills for fast descending. She owes a lot of those, of course, to her dad who uh, still trains with her when he can, when she's at home. Sends her off various uh, obstacles, whether, whether she likes it or not, I think. <laughs> but it's worked. Batty goes through. Wojtowska right there with her. So Anna Tauber in third place at the moment. Almost certainly, Anna Tauber lives below sea level, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she did a lot of training uh, on altitude uh, in between the races. And there's Gunnery's Gunnery husband, who is also a coach champ, plenty of encouragement. That will help a lot, somebody on the side of the course to motivate yourself. She told me how strong he is. To inform her. He's a fit man himself, right? I yeah, suppose he's got to be. He goes with her for every training almost. He does? Oh, really? On the, on the course, on the road, there the whole week. So. Wow. He's definitely in shape. 
Small gaps in between the riders. 17 seconds between Yolanda and Gunrita. A minute back for Langvad. This might be pretty big in the overall today. It's less, sorry, sorry. It's, it's less between Yolanda Neff and uh, Gunrita at the moment. Keep an eye on that then. Let's see if Gunrita can get back to Neff. But she still looks really uh, good. Oh, there's Gunrita already. She, I mean, I think the pep talk from the husband might have uh, given her a little boost bar. Yeah, but also if you see the rider in front of you, the, the leader of the race, it all helps a lot too. It's yeah. a position Gunnery has been in umpteen times before. She will know the experience, especially the altitude that she has. It's got to help, hasn't it? It is, yeah. And probably she wouldn't overcook herself in a race. So she, she's a very steady pace at the moment and try to get back here automatically with that pace. And it seems to be like that. And probably Yolanda, the yeah, not that experienced rider in the high altitude races compared to Gunrita. It's more, it's more, she has a more aggressive style, pushing it harder, riding in the red zone over the limit. But still it's a, se a second, six Just, seconds. Yeah, yeah, six seconds, nothing. Tauber comes across the line in third place then. A beautiful shot from the finish line. It's a big climb up to that line today. I think yeah, everybody is going to try and avoid a, a sprint finish, you'd imagine. It's, uh, Did you think of anything worse than a sprint finish that's uphill under altitude after, yeah. you know, six or eight laps around this thing? You should have some oxygen afterwards. Yeah, we saw that actually in a short track race. Yeah, but yeah. Riders did look like they were in a bit of trouble, some of them, trying to get their breath back. Today a little less intense so far, of course, because it's a much longer distance, but uh, it's going to wind up at the end, I, very likely. So the top five on one, all on one climb. We've just gone past the halfway point of this race, then if you just joined us, it's round five, Mercedes-Benz UCI Cross Country World Cup from La Masana Bike Park here in the Principality of Andorra. Our high altitude setting. Langvad goes across the line. A minute back. A minute back. Is that tallying? That's going to be a big order to get back on the pace of the leaders now. Last week's winner, Wojtowska there. Head down on the wheel of Emily Batty. Last year's winner, Janabella Moyna, comes up to go across the line in seventh, just ahead of Kate Courtney. McKeel's there from Belgium, ninth place for her. So Bella Moyna, we knew she's strong uh, when the race goes on. The endurance is good of her. But a uh, one and a half minute back, it's, uh, it's a bit too much, I think, for a win for today. Langford in front of her, almost at the top of this climb, that first new added climb of this course. A good ride from uh, Hita Michielsen from Belgium too, here in the black, yellow and white, uh, red jersey. Ah, Stierman, problem for her. It seems to be a health problem. I was going to say, yeah. could well have been looked more physical than it did uh, mechanical there. Let's hope she's OK. The altitude bar, perhaps, being a big factor for that. I don't know, but she did. We will try and find out for you at home what, what's gone on there. But see also the gaps in between the riders. I mean, here we're uh, Pauline Ferrand Prevot, 12 at the moment. More than two minutes behind the leader. Things are really opening up here then. So I think everything is still possible in this race. Uh, the conditions are very hard. It's a hard course, it's the altitude, but it's also hot. The riders they have to take their fluids to themselves. If they forget to do it, they will pay for it at the end of the race. Dehydration definitely more of a problem up here, yeah, is it? Especially on altitude, yeah. yeah, you have to drink even more. Even we have to do. Water. Just had a report, actually, that uh, Katrin Sturdeman struggling to get her breath, struggling to breathe up here at altitude. I mean, that's how hard they go in these races. And I think even with uh, the dry air, what it is right now with the sun out, it's, it's getting even more difficult for the riders. Gunrita, second place. Keeping that gap about the side. Yeah, the leader is on vision. It's going to be a big day for Dala, maybe. Yolanda Neff still leading. Can she open the gap again in that technical descent? Definitely she tries to do it. 
small gear, high cadence. And you need to have to have that traction in your rear wheel, especially on these steep climbs with a lot of roots. It's very hard to do. Winner of one World Cup this year. Already, you know, in Albstadt, actually Germany. A little while ago now, earlier part of the year. Different conditions in the wet and slippery. I'll tell you what, Bart, the, the decision that she made to come back after that broken collarbone early to race in South Africa after that accident she had cyclocross racing. You know, she was not supposed to start actually in South Africa. It might be a good one when it comes to the overall this year. Yeah, that's, that's right. She did leave there with a uh, sixth place at round one. A phenomenal performance, really. She only went as a spectator. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if, if you can come back after a, a collarbone, a broken collarbone that quick. It's impressive. Oh, Around five weeks. Yeah, five weeks. So there's Brandel. 12th place for her at the moment. On her own. Nobody in front of her. Is that a nice or a bad thing? Uh, I think it's a bad thing, yeah. It helps so much if you have somebody around you. It uh, motivates the speed, it motivates yourself, uh, the mentally expect uh, to... <laughs> Flying. My word. And they're throwing everything at these downhills, trying to grab any gap that she can. Nice style. Yeah, smooth, fast. It's really fast. Really fast, yep. Even on a hard tail. Try to recover as well in these sections. Risky bar going that hard under the sense for the, in, the, in the respect of getting a puncher, perhaps? Yeah, it's very it's rocky. Here. It is, it's really rocky. Oh, I couldn't read that. Oh, it's well, just far behind. No, I he, saw that as well. But these women, they are very light, so uh, the tire pressure, of course, it's a crucial uh, thing of the bike. But, uh, that and incredibly low. What, what sort of pressure is it? I think they're running at 1.1, 1.3 max. Bar. Bar. Really? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a very low uh, tire pressure. Wow. So a pinch flat, so that when they hit a rock, so the tire, when they hit the, the, the tire in between a rock and a rim, that's the most critical uh, point, actually, well, what's, why you will have a flat tire. And even these women, they taking the lightest tires which are available of course, to most yeah. of the time you have different uh, versions of a tire like with the protection sidewalls but these women they ride uh, the lowest version that you can have well it is a, a rotating mass i suppose so it's yeah. critical someone once told me is it i can't remember exactly but it's like a gram on the wheel is worth a pound on the bike or something you yeah i thought it's like uh, on, one, you'll be right but one, one, one gram on the on the on the on the tire it's six grams on the bike is that what it is there you go yeah. not a pound then <laughs> maybe it feels like that <laughs> dala definitely keeping your land and earth honest today and on a mission the pressure's on can she win another world cup can she win her 30th world cup it would be nice to see i must admit Also, it'd be nice to see this pressure on her face. Tell she's getting exhausted. Gunrita not that far behind her anymore. It looks like she pulled a bit on that climb, you know, Yolanda, I think. Don't you? Looks like that. A little bit? Yeah. yeah. Gunrita accelerating in between these corners. Neff goes through there, the reigning world champ. Dala has been a nine-time world champion. Five times cross-country marathon, four times in this discipline, cross-country Olympics, as it's properly called. And see the way how these women are breathing. Uh, the, the mouth wide open. Anna Tauber, Emily Betty. Closely together. Seems to be Betty is very fast here too. Same as Yolanda is all the time. Yeah. Different corners on the grass. There's a lot of the grass is gone. Gravel comes up. Slippery. Yeah, this grass, these grass turns can be incredibly slick. Myers is Oscar. The last rider of these three. The winner from last week. 
Betty taking an extra fluid on her neck to cool down. It was a hot out there today as well. Another factor for these women, just to make things even harder. So Talbra leading this pack, this group of riders. Maya perhaps struggling there a little bit, but not too bad. Different style, sitting in the saddle. But she's with them. Tried to recover in these little descents. Betty very close on the rear wheel of Anna Taube. But here she is, uh, Maya Zazowska. Probably she wouldn't ride that close together. No, with these two. Then you're making life harder for yourself, that's for sure. 34 years old, Maya Mustovska. Silver medalist at the Olympics in Rio in 2016. She's been world marathon champion as well. National champion from Poland. So the chasing group, these three. Can they come back to Kunrita or can come, Kunrita come back to Yolanda Neff? There's Anna Kalangva without glasses. As it stands at the moment, she's going to slip a little bit further back from Yolanda Neff in the overall standings. Yeah, so that's... Uh, it's still interesting, that yeah. overall standing. <laughs> Definitely it is. Stop score on the climb. Yeah, we knew uh, Langfats is very strong in the short track discipline. As you came back uh, a few extra points to Yolanda last Friday, but right now, with the lead of uh, Yolanda Neff, it's different. And it's surprising that, you know, Langvad never actually won the World Cup overall. Yeah, I didn't know that. No, surprising. <laughs> yeah, it is. Because she's so she's dominant at some races, you she's, know. She's always, but I think she's always strong, more, more strong in the beginning of the season. And the second part of the season, it's always more difficult for her. That is the pattern that we see. She won several times that first round. Good meet you. Very nearly on the back wheel of Yolanda again. Coming around now to finish this lap, and then it's going to be the penultimate lap. So uh, we might be seeing one of these riders get a boogie on over the next couple of laps. Yeah, maybe they will the slow down a little bit. Uh, I mean, Yolanda, probably she will slow down a little bit because uh, Gunrit, I think she wouldn't push it too hard. She's back on the wheel right now. So if she can keep recover a little bit of that high intensity racing, what they already have done. At least the endurance of Gunrita is very strong. Now they are together. Two leaders, three riders in a chasing group. And there's Gunrita Dala's husband and coach, training partner. It seems to be this part of the course suits uh, Gunrita really oh. well. Well, I don't know, he shouted something then, and Gunri has gone to the front. I was going to ask you, I suppose, but, you know, I was going to say, you know, he won't be able to say too much, but, of course, Gunri are fluent in five different languages, so if they didn't want a Yolanda, Yolanda to understand it, it wouldn't have been too, too much of a problem, I'd imagine. I don't know if Yolanda understands the Norwegian language. No, exactly, I doubt it. <laughs> I think that's the best to talk. <laughs> Probably they do, <laughs> why not? Gunri Adala then, to the front for the first time really in this race. Here's the chases. Three of them now in this chasing group. Yeah, my all, all the time, a little bit behind the tour of chasers. But that's probably the way she loves to ride. Not too close to the rear wheel of Emily Betty. I will do a lot of work here in the chasing group. So two leaders right now. Yolanda Neve and Gunrita Dale. What can Gunrita do? Looks like she's strong. Sick in the beginning of the week. Not riding that short track on Friday. 
that's ready for a win. Daubo. Betty Swazowska. Taking the fluids, the drinks. Now it's Gunrita who's leading. With two more laps to go. And definitely Yolanda, she will try and be in the first position where the technical descent starts. But Yolanda's up here. Gunrita's pushing hard. It's hard for Yolanda. Different style, smaller gear. Can she go with her? Rita Dala and Yolanda Neff. And the Taubo taking a gel. Well, at that point of the race, just two laps to go now as these riders cross the line there. Emily Batty done really well to get back to this spot actually after that chain dropping earlier in the race. She might have been on that leading pack. Well, stay with us then, and we'll be back with the closing stages of this race here in Val Nord and Dora, right back after this. It's one of the most popular outdoor sports. From its early beginnings to the creation of major events and disciplines. Rolling with the current legends. Everything you need to know about rules, history, and terminology. The ABC of mountain biking, now available on Red Bull TV. Espero vê-los no Brasil no meu instituto Neymar Júnior e boa sorte para a final de 2018. Watch Red Bull Neymar Jr.'s 5 World Final live from Brazil, July 21st, 3 p.m. on Red Bull TV. Well, welcome back then to Val Nord in Andorra, where we are live with the women's cross country race. Round five of this year's Mercedes Benz UCI Cross Country World Cup. And Gun Rita Dala has pulled, has gone to the front and pulled away from Yolanda Nepp. Is this a telling move, Bart? Yeah, this is a telling move, definitely it is. Uh, maybe Yolanda can come back in and after the technical descent, but it looks like Gurita Dali is much stronger, especially when it uh, comes to the end of the race with two more laps to go, not that far anymore. So she uh, she's the most experienced rider as well, and she knew how to deal with the conditions here on high altitude, 2,000 meters above sea level. This is the chasing group, Betty, Taubo, Maya Zosowska. And Betty, after that technical problem in the beginning of the race, she lost the connection with the first, with the leaders. But back on three, Taubo goes with her. Number seven and five for the back, back number. Bella Moyer up to six, that's good. Yeah, and high, high speeds. Yeah, looking good there, isn't she, on that climb? Yeah, one of the best climbers. Looking down, Bart, is that a, uh, is that a tactic? Not to see how far you got to go on the climb? Jeez, Someone that's... told me only to stare at my bars. It was Sam Gaze, actually, on the climb. When I, <laughs> I was riding with him, he was, he was like, don't look up, just keep looking at your bars. But if you are a bit more raised up, uh, you can breathe much easily, actually. Yeah, uh, can you, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, but it's also, yeah, each uh, stylist personally as well. It's going to be a dollar then. The way how she's riding, I mean, no expression on her face. She knows what to do. And Yolanda Neff, she's struggling with her pace. Can we Dala doing it for Scandinavia with Langvad. Somewhere further back in the pack at the moment. So Gunri to Dala. Her 119th World Cup start today. 119th, there's only seven every year. It's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Probably when she started mountain biking, we still had 10. I don't know, actually. 1995, maybe it might be. But if anyway. She, if she wins today, then. It was only six a, six a year, six races yes, a year. Right. 
If she wins the day bar and takes World Cup win number 30, that means that she will have won 25% of all the World Cup she started. Well, what a hit right that is. And it looks like that at the moment. It does. Yep. It really does. Especially when it comes to the end of the race here on altitude. The gaps between the riders, they were opening. Here also between uh, Betty and Tauber. With Maya Zuzowska just behind these two, there she is. On that technical part of the course. 20 seconds back to Yolanda Neff. Neff. Of... And that's between the start line and split one. That Big. means a, that means a lot. It's huge. Bally now up to third. So a great ride for Emily Batty again. Neff is going to want to hold on to that though, Bart, because she is leading this year's World Cup. She needs to take as many points away from this as she can, obviously, especially when uh, Annika Langvad probably riding a little bit injured from that crash last week. It's further back than probably I would have expected. Yeah, the, we expect a bit more of her, especially when she said uh, she hasn't any uh, problems to, uh, with her wrist anymore. And she did pretty well in that short track uh, too last Friday. So, uh, but cross country, it's different again. But uh, for Yolanda, it means a lot to take the most as possible points for the overall. Second at the moment. But if she has, has to do by herself, chasing Gunrita, it's not that easy with one more lap to go. One and a half from now on. That steep climb, Gunrita in front of her. So we're here for the sixth time in Andorra. There's the gap, you can see it. Gunrita's going that quick, she's kicking up a whirlwind behind her. Looks like that, or not? Here also, the hero of uh, Emily Betty. Bit of an uplift. Tailwind. They need that. But yeah, no repeat women winner ever in Andorra. Tauber, ahead of Wojtowska. They've only got to face this brutal climb one more time after this, which I'm pretty sure they'll be thankful for on a day like this, but so exposed out there as well. The heat will be burning on their backs. It's a beautiful day to stay on the side, but riding your bike. On the American Eagle, cresting the climb again. What's that little black pad on the top tube there? It's a protection of the frame here. Uh, otherwise, if you uh, have a crash, the handlebar will hit the frame and uh, it breaks yep. pretty easily on that part of the frame. Yep. So it's a uh, kind of a protection. It's not that she's crashing uh, that much, but <laughs> if it happens, you will damage the frame. That's right. These frames, these carbon fibre frames, obviously incredibly strong. I mean, look how thin the seat stays are on them. But they're not... 27.2 so seat stay. Is that right? Yeah. Compared to 31.6, which is the other size uh, most of the time used in the uh, full suspension bikes and are probably also going up. Oh, OK. But these bikes won't take an impact, will they? Not like an aluminium frame. They're not designed to do that, of course. <laughs> no, not at all. Don't be dropping them. So, Gunria Dala, you can see up in almost the top right-hand corner of your picture, Neff in the bottom left. But Emily Betty is coming there too in the descent already. Yes, Batty not far behind. A small back over her shoulder for Yolanda here. She knows as well. Tauber on four, and Maja Zuzowska on the fifth place. That is third, fourth and fifth you're looking at. I think everything is still possible. Emily Betty, she finished second last week. But never won a race, not, never won a World Cup race. Never won a World Cup. Watch out for her in uh, Monsenham in the next round oh, of yeah, course in right. Canada. She's on great form this year. Today hasn't quite gone her way. Brandau in 10th at the moment there, the German. But yeah, Batty, she's still searching Bart. But in a... And there's Pauline Ferran Prevot. The number three plate on her back. Actually still good in the race. I mean, in the beginning it didn't look like that. We expect probably a bit too much of her. Uh, of course, she became world champion over here many, a couple of years ago. But uh, I mean, in the 10th position right now, it's not too bad. No, that's exactly right. There's Kate Courtney as well ahead of them then. 
So Courtney having another really strong ride, the American. Had her best Elite World Cup finish a week ago in uh, Italy. Elisabeth Brando with the orange helmet. And there's Kellerbach coming into view in the red in the background, the short track winner on Friday. Maybe paying the price for that effort. Langvad goes through the tech feed zone. Yeah, not her best ride this season so far. Of course, she quit the race in the uh, Valdi Sola. Whoa, <laughs> October. <laughs> Gave us a shock. <laughs> Penultimate lap here in Valnord Andorra. Small gaps in between the riders at the moment. With Emily Betty on three. There's your third place at the moment. Good weekend, not that far in front of her. Can she come back? Oh, I mean, it must be Yolanda now, sorry, sorry. 39 seconds back to Emily Batty. 23 seconds back to Neff from our leader. Has the damage been done in this race? You have to think so, really, Bart. Yeah, and especially when it comes to that last lap. Uh, I mean, all these women are struggling uh, and fighting really hard. They are exhausted. So the mentally aspect in a race as where they are right now, it, it's almost probably the, the decision of the race. It has to be really, doesn't they it? They have That's to struggle way. with that. And I think Rita, she can handle it. She's the most experienced rider. She definitely didn't look stressed at all during today's race. Not at all. Not once. It's true. And see the expression on Yolanda's face. She's so gritty though, Bart, she won't give up, that's for sure. She knows as well as anyone that anything can happen in mountain biking. And she can't give up because here comes Emily Batty. Not far behind now, really. No, that no. is definitely doable for Batty. Yeah, there definitely it is. Look at her charging. Yeah, but also there's a lot of speed you can see yeah. after the corners, but she can carry on. Straight where, back up to speed. Where Yolanda never struggling a bit with all these little little details, as these these yeah, these sharp hairpins, where it's really hard to carry on that speed. Yeah, Batty really carrying the pace around those turns, those steep uphill switchbacks. Yeah, Annabella Moina. Well, she won here last year, she won't be winning again here this year. Of course, but, you know, Probably still affected by that injury from the winner, I would imagine. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. Uh, the she strength in the both trunk. legs is uh, still a bit. But six at the moment. Yeah. She finished second in Alpstad earlier this year, which was actually impressive. But uh, this this course, yeah, suits her really well. Six is not too bad. Of course, she likes no. to be on the podium. But with one more lap to go, you never know. I mean, no. it's still possible to be on the podium for her. To have a win, it's different. There's your land in F then. 23 seconds back behind Gunrita Dale. That's the youngest woman ever to take this overall World Cup title. And only 15 seconds in between Yolanda Neff and Emily Betty. Gunrita in control at the front of this race. From the beginning in control. Yeah, you think you're right. She didn't lead, but she did not let Yolanda get a big gap on her either. Seemed quite content in the early stage of this race, just to sit there. It was almost on her husband's command, her trainer's command, that she went and overtook Yolanda. Yeah. It looks like that. Neff takes on some much needed fluids. A new bottle for her, some water to cool down. Oh, Keller's got a flat tire. How yeah, disappointing for her. Ah, that's bad on this this part of the race. It's really hard to uh, ride a flat tire, especially in the climbs. She'll be glad of the 125 points she scored in uh, Friday night short track race, Keller. So not lucky today. So last lap then, on, on we go now. Gunnery Adala commanding at the moment. Her husband on the side of the course. He's not even on an e-bike. He He's that strong himself. He doesn't need it. <laughs> so they went across 
the line a lap ago equal now it's 29 seconds back and uh, 18 between Neff and Batty it stays the same Neff, Batty, the gap in between these two 18 seconds what can Taubo do together with Mario Zuzowska this is the podium, the top five one more lap and riders they can see each other here on this climb Yolanda almost at the top Emily Betty and then we have Tauber and Maya Zuzowska riders are close together but impossible to <laughs> to catch each other Hard race here up at altitude then in Andorra. Marbuzovska really still trying to keep the pressure on Talba. Hard race for these two but Yeah, it is. Jana Willemoyne, there she is. The winner from last year. Two minutes back for six. That's, uh, that's showing just how tough this race is. It's really strung this field out. Behind her, we have Langvat with Gita Michielse from Belgium. Annika Langvat, second in the overall at the moment. Still going to take good points away from here with that a seventh, eighth finish if she can stay ahead of Michaels. But a hard day for her. Lost 20 seconds again that lap, so definitely it is. These climbs just. They're, they're pretty exposed, long, and just there's not much on them, Bart, really, to break them up for you. It just comes down to uh, an all out power pedal, really, isn't it? You know what I mean? There's no technical stuff. No, there's, there's, no, there's nothing in it, just actually, raw on these climbs. climbing, yeah, it raw. Is. Yeah, a few of the climbs uh, into that forest, uh, more when it comes to the finish line, they are more technical, but over here, it's just you need to have the power. And also, that uh, wall climb, how we call it. You need to have a lot of power. And of course, the body weight of the riders yeah, means a lot over there too. The Gunnery Adala then. Actually uh, been on the podium here four times. Narrowly missed out on a medal at the World Championships in 2015. The best result, a second uh, back in 2016. And when did she win her last World Cup? When Rita, when did she win her last World Cup? When did she win her last World Cup? That's a very good question, actually. I will uh, endeavour to find that out for you. Lenz Heider, 2015. Oh, where the World Championships are this year. Watch out. <laughs> She's going to retiring after this season. Why? Why should she? I got a feeling she won't. There she is. Everything in control. The Norwegian striking again here. Anna Taubo from the Netherlands. Riding a great race already two times this year on the third place on the podium. And she was in the top ten here last year as well, Bart, so it's going to be a, a better result for her than she had a year ago if she can stay there, of course. Yolanda Neff, second place. But Emily Betty, she's not that far behind her. That's the 2016 winner here. 18 seconds at the finish line. Doesn't look like she's going to make it. A repeat win, though, in this venue. Today, at least. She was leading in the beginning of the race. Strong. Can she hold on this second spot? Gap's not getting any bigger. I would say. It looks like Emily Batty's coming back. It does, doesn't it? Looks like that, yeah. It's still got that big long climb, the wall to hit. Yeah, it's coming up quite soon. Emily Batty also strong in that last lap. No easy way up that far. We saw last week. Nowhere to hide on that climb, is there? No, nothing. So it's very important for Yolanda Neff to opening the gap here a little bit to Emily Betty. The te this technical descent, a long one, off camber at the bottom. 40 seconds now. It's becoming very rough because of the dry conditions. 
11 seconds between Neff and Batty now. Rose of Taubo, not that far behind Emily Batty at the moment. Opening the gap a bit to Maja Zosowska, who's fifth. Ooh. Maja came in there pretty hot, it looked like. That's what I thought too, but she, she rode it out. So, Maja at the moment taking the last spot of the uh, five-person podium here in uh, UCI Mountain Biking. There's Neff on that long camber back down, heading back down towards the bottom of the wall. You've got to say, Bart, how impressed we've been with Gunrita on the descents, though, because Neff's been going all out on them. I mean, know how fast she is, but, you know, Gunrita's been really flying as well. Yeah, yeah, that's... But we saw that also when they were riding very close yeah. together. I mean, Yolanda was not opening the gap that much. No, incredible. More her uh, style of riding, which looks really fast. Yes. Yeah. Betty on three. Out of the saddle, pushing her hard. She wants this, look at her. She can see Yolanda ahead of her. Back in the saddle. Is it a sign that she's still got something left in those legs to stand yeah, up? Yeah, or yeah, is that a yeah. Sign that she hasn't. Yeah. No, no, no. She's uh, pushing it really hard. I mean, Yolanda, she's pushing a smaller gear, Betty a bigger gear. She goes a bit faster over here. It's just. Oh, yeah, she almost can touch her. Yeah. Can't be many things more motivating than seeing that. But impressive how fast Yolanda goes with that small gear here on this mountain. That's it's a style, isn't it? Always. It's a style, yeah. yeah but it's, especially when it comes to the end of the race, it's very hard for your hard lung system. It's a fear gap still, till uh, the other camera angle showing us. Making it look a little bit bigger again. Well, thankfully, they haven't got to tackle that climb again. What an interesting, incredible year of racing we're having. Five races, if Gunria can stay there, it'll be the fourth different winner. That's how competitive women's cross-country is at the moment. Yeah, we discussed it already several times. The women's category is always wide open, and yeah, uh, yeah that's uh, how they show it. Here at Langhart, Yolanda Neff, Gunrita. Oh, that little slip in that turn there. She just push everything out on the descent, Yolanda. Yeah, this, uh, these corners becoming more slippery of that because of that loose gravel that comes up. And you see the dust as well. Same for Emily Batty, also sliding away with the rear wheel. Not that far anymore, almost there. Emily Batty, really on good form this year, really on good form in these last few races. If she stays where she is, it'll be her third podium in three World Cup. Dala, though, riding on regardlessly towards that finish line. What an incredible performance for her. Her last World Cup podium was her 70th. She was the oldest rider ever to get on a podium, actually, at 45 years old last week in Val de Sole. She is quite an athlete, but an incredible athlete. She is. She is, definitely, she is. Across any the sport. Way she, how, how she's still performing on her age, uh, a lot of respect for that. She's still flying on the downhills. Probably did. This has been her main uh, goal uh, in her career, actually, but because th that was her still her motivation to keep on going. More world championship gold medals than anyone. Let's not forget as well, but she is a mum. She is. Just to uh, add to uh, her workload a little bit more while she tries to stay at the top of this sport. Absolutely amazing. She's actually going to homeschool her kid a little bit as well so that he can travel with her, she said. So she's got a fair bit on, I'd say, in life. But obviously, clearly, you know, her and her husband as a family, they absolutely love it. So Bay still trying, still trying to close that gap down on the Alanda ahead. Yeah, she's still pushing really hard, Emily Betty. Sat right on the tip of that saddle. That's a sign usually that they pushing hard. Pushing harder. A, a quick uh, look back over her shoulder. 
Anatol Bereshi, the number four in the race. Well, it looks like, as you can see, uh, Yolanda have in front of her. There's Dauber. So, as much as the field is spread out, the first four, reasonably close, really. It is. All in between one minute. Gunrita, there she is. Incredible. Another incredible performance. She's been with her team quite a while, but with Marida, that yeah. man for a long time now. It's more like a private team, what she has right now. I think her husband is her uh, team manager too, trainer. But it works well for her. Yolanda Neff breathing hardly. Well, Yolanda Neff is, no, is someone who never leaves anything out there on the track, is she? Emily Betty on three. What a performance again for her. She's really riding well at the moment, yeah. <laughs> She's almost there. Pretty frantic instruction. I wish I understood, understood Norwegian. <laughs> Wherever he's saying it's working. This is incredible, Bart, to see this from Gunrita yeah, Dahl. I have yeah. to say. A lot of respect for her. Look at the emotion between her and her husband as well. What a team they are. She's nearly there, Bart. Yeah, but also the way how she's performing in the last years of her career. I mean, this must be her uh, main goal, actually, at the end of, the, of her career. She knows as well her age. It's probably the, yeah, the, the most difficult thing. But she's still doing it. She's still absolutely doing it. She is still winning at the very highest level in this sport. She's an absolutely incredible woman. No looking back, still focused, still composed. She's just kept turning those pedals at that sort of rate the whole race, really. She's almost there, yeah. Almost the same, the same cadence the whole race. But the way how, she, how she's pushing it, it goes fast. A lot of power there, Bart. That's has, for sure. She has a lot of power. Unbelievable that she's still has the love and the motivation for this sport after so many years. So Gunnery Adala crest the bridge is just going to be a ride up to the line now. It's going to be 30 World Cup wins for the greatest female this sport has ever seen. Gunnery Adala races further into the history books. She breaks her own record as the oldest woman ever to win a World Cup race. Men as well, no one else has done it like this. Gunnarita Dala joins the 30 club with Julian Absalom, the greatest World Cup racers we have ever seen. And Yolanda Neff, what a performance again for her. Second place today. She's going to extend her lead in the overall World Cup standings. It's been a hard one, but it's been worth it. Neff looks exhausted, as does Gunnarita. No surprises there. They stopped paddling immediately after that finish line. They wouldn't go any <laughs> further than they did. Oh, it's oh. been a hard day out. See you, love that. Oof. We've seen it before. This is how tough it is. Anna Talba, third place for her today. Oh, excuse me, Emily Batty, third place today. Sorry. Talba, fourth. Anna Talba in fourth. Almost there. A few metres left for her. Emily Batty. But see, Another but great see run. F. <laughs> Exhausted. Tauber comes across the line in fourth. What a couple of weekends Emily Bay's had, though. Second last week, third this week. The cross it team comes strong up. again today. Yeah. Last week's winner, Maya Wojtowska. Comes across the line to take the last spot on the podium. 
She's very exhausted. Ilan Manev. She was leading at the beginning of the race. She feels the pain. Well. It was a good margin. <laughs> Back to six. That's for sure. Look at that. Yana Bilomoyna, probably she's on six. The fair margin, what you said, two minutes, there she is. More than two minutes. Sixth place for Jana Bilomoyna, the winner from last year here in Andorra. Good performance, Bart, considering what, what she went through in the winter. The defending World Cup champion then comes across the line in sixth place. Hita Michielsen from Belgium. Great ride for her, Bart. The great race, yes. Seventh place today. Matches her best ever World Cup finish. Annika Langvart, where is she? Here she is. A bit of damage done in the overall World Cup standings today. But. Yeah, everything is still possible. That's right. In that. <laughs> and see how hard it was for these women. I heard the word horrible come out of Emily's mouth. <laughs> it must be like that. Kate Courtney. Another brave performance from the young Californian Courtney inside the top ten again. Ninth place for her, Kate Courtney. <laughs> And the number nine comes in 10th place. Elisabeth Brandau from Germany. A great performance of her. But, but, 30 World Cup wins for the greatest World Cup racer there has ever been in, female, in the female side of the sport. Yeah, what a performance she delivered today. Absolutely amazing. And good to see. What a night. If, if she does retire at the end of the year, it's going to be a nice round 30. She's down with Rick. Gunnarita, your 30th ever UCI World Cup win. What does that mean to you? Ah, this is just, uh, it's not even a dream almost. Of course, we had believed it for many years, but it's still not, it's just awesome. It's, I think I have to dedicate this 30th World Cup win to Merida Norway, that is celebrated that 30th year selling Merida bikes. So this is just perfect. We worked hard for it. I have a fantastic team around me. My husband is the greatest coach and training partner. So I have so many around me that really support me. So I don't know, I don't know what to say. It's just, uh, like a dream. It looked like you had to work hard to catch Yolanda right at the beginning. Were you always confident that the legs were there? Um, it's a little bit like in altitude, you, you can't put the gas on too much. I think I used a lot of my experience. I have some years behind me, so I used that a lot. And I did most of the races here in Andorra very well and knew that. And that's, of course, their confidence when you go into a race like this. I, I knew, I saw that she was starting to, to have stiff legs and maybe she pushed too, much, too hard in some climbs. So. And with the people running around, cheering me on, so many supporters here, it's fantastic. So I think I got some extra energy for free. It was uh, unbelievable. Finally, we have to ask you, are you convinced that retirement's the right decision after a performance like that? The plan before we started this season was to have my last UCI World Cup in La Bresse. But I'm not convinced at the moment, so um, this uh, makes the decision even worse and more difficult, I believe. No, I, I will make my decision after the Worlds, but I would love to continue. Just have to talk to family and some sponsors, and then we will see. Well, we hope to see you back, Gunnarita. Congratulations today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Keep riding. I have some years of experience, she said. Yeah, that's more than that. <laughs> And but her retirement, I don't believe it. Why should she? How can you? Yeah. Keep on going. There's only Rita. one there's only one rider with more, and it's you know Julian Absalom. He has 33 World Cup wins. Those two, the only two in the over 30s club for World Cup wins. Emily Batty then third place ahead of Anna Tauber fourth. Bella Moyner up to sixth. Gita Mikhail seventh. Langvad. 
Eighth place for the Dane in the end. Two minutes 53 back. It's been a long, hard ride in the mountains at altitude for these women today. Yeah, your top three, Emily Betty. What a race of her. She had a technical problem in the beginning, but she, keep the, she kept on going and finished third. A great performance after her second place from last week. Yolanda Neff was leading in the beginning of the race for a while. It almost looked like she could take another win, but it was another girl. Another woman, Gunrita Dahle from Norway. Her third heat win. Unbelievable. On her age, to do it again. It's what she said, keep on riding, and she did it. There's a strong case for you to make a comeback, Bart, looking at this. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> You've enjoyed the good life after racing too much. It's true. So a good couple of weeks in Europe for Emily Batty. We go to her home race, as close to her home race as we get in Quebec and Canada in the next round. Which one is a beautiful and probably the most technical of the whole circuit. Yeah, it's a lovely track there. Yolanda Neff, second place today. But it's GRD Gunner, Rita Dala. Thank you. Thank you. Who takes the win here? Definitely the woman to tell everyone to keep riding. <laughs> she lives by her own rules. <laughs> okay, everyone, stay with us. Me and Bart will be right back with the wrap-up show. See you then. Pump up your tires for the world of Red Bull. The best live events, feature films, and shows. Make it your world and download the app for free. Red Bull TV is available on all your devices, anywhere, at any time. Go beyond the ordinary. Get the app now. Seven speedways, 25 young stars, one champion. Watch the Red Bull Rookies Cup live. Meu torneio de futebol 5 contra 5, Neymar Juniors 5, está de volta. Jogadores com mais de 60 países estão competindo pelo título mundial. As regras, simples. Cada partida de 10 minutos. Não tem goleiro. Cada equipe faz um gol. O adversário perde um jogador. Espero vê-los no Brasil, no meu instituto, Neymar Jr. E boa sorte para a final de 2018. Watch Red Bull Neymar Jr.'s 5 World Final, live from Brazil. July 21st, 3 p.m. on Red Bull TV. Crab life by the handlebars. Red Bull TV presents... A rapid channel dedicated to bike sports. Available anywhere, at any time. Go for a spin and explore urban playgrounds on a BMX. Progression is definitely what makes me go ride every day. Follow daredevils who push their pedals to the metals in competitive live events. Here comes Shata! Or take on terrains no wheel has ever touched before. We truly won't know until we step out of our comfort zones and off this continent. Powered by pedals and passion, the Bike Channel on Red Bull TV.
Welcome back live to Andorra here on Red Bull TV for the Mercedes-Benz race review. And we have just seen more history made. Gardner Rita Dala pushing herself further into the history books, but World Cup win number 30. Incredible. Yeah, she didn't have that much word to, uh, to say <laughs> how incredible it was. And even if we don't have uh, her 30th World Cup wins, that's something really special. And she was aiming for that for many years, and uh, now she has it. And I mean, a long way ahead of anyone else competing. None of those women there on that list, apart from her, are still going. No, I mean, uh, we have to uh, have a look to the younger women uh, who still can uh, get it. But, I mean, 30 wins, that's something incredible. It's going to be a long, long time since we've seen it beat. Seen we, till we see that beaten, if ever. The, the uh, retirement does sound a little bit more in doubt now, but after that, she might not. You might be regretting uh, saying that at the start of the year. Yeah, I think she's in doubt about it, and she loves riding her bike. And uh, if she can continue to ride on this level, why should she? I mean, with two more uh, years to go, uh, maybe the Olympics. That might be another goal for her, which motivate her. Because you need to have that motivation to keep on going. Well, she'll only be 47 then, so. So uh, why not? I mean, it's just amazing that she can go. And Yolanda Neff today put up a brave fight against her, didn't she? But in the end, it was Gunrita that came out on top. Let's have a look how their lap times, how their laps compare here. Yeah, Yolanda Neff definitely the fastest in the beginning of the race. Uh, maybe she was pushing it a bit too hard. And you know, with this uh, on this altitude, on this uh, high altitude, it, it's really difficult uh, to go over your limit. You have to pay the price for that. And you and uh, Dale, she's the most experienced rider, and she did her uh, race by herself. Of course, uh, Yolanda Neff was in vision all the time, so that motivates her uh, and uh, fighting really hard for that win. And she got it. She absolutely did. I saw that. She took 28 seconds out of Yolanda towards the end of the race. Let's find out how Yolanda is feeling after that. She's with Rick. Yolanda, second today. Did you pay the price for that fast initial pace? Uh, no, not at all. I felt great in the start, and I think I was riding the same speed throughout the whole race. Like I felt really good. Uh, Kunrita was just putting the gas on full gas. She just went faster and faster. And uh, uh, I mean, it's such a great honor to like even race with her. It's her 30th win. And, she is such an inspiration and yeah I, I, I I'm, I'm super happy with my race today and uh, she is like it's just a great honor to be on the podium with her are you happy with the points you've scored over Annika today as well and the overall oh uh, yeah I'm just uh, extremely happy that I still have to choose and that I can take it to Monson and to Canada I can't wait for that race in Monson then uh, it's one of my favorite tracks and uh, I'm just uh, I'm so excited already for that race Yolanda, well done today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> you can hear the effort that Yolanda had to make in her, make in her voice today at high altitude. Nice to hear her. I mean, of course, you know, she's the reigning world champion, one of the sports greats as well, to have so much love for Gunrita. Yeah, a lot of respect uh, from uh, Yolanda Neff for, for Gunrita, but also what she said, the, she extend her leader's uh, position. Uh, that means, uh, yeah, probably a small win in this race too. And she's looking forward already to uh, yeah, Montenegro. It means also Yolanda Neff, she's feeling really good. And uh, yeah, maybe because of the, the course, she, she's not able to win uh, today but she might have uh, another win this year I guess. Another woman who's going to be looking forward to going to Canada is Canadian Emily Batty. Things might have been a little bit different for her if that shade hadn't dropped, do you think? Yeah, I mean, you lost the connection with the first leaders and you have to come down, if you have to come back to the leaders, that caused a lot of energy. And also she wasn't uh, convinced about her uh, yeah, technical details of the bike, so she was looking to her bike several times. And all these little things, yeah, I think with that third place today, she might be happy with that. Well, she's had a good couple of weeks here in Europe actually. Two top three finishes, she's with Rick. Emily, third place today, but did that mechanical issue early in the race cost you? Yeah, actually, I had a great first lap and um, I felt like really strong. So I knew I was going to be in it, but then I did make a, a mistake in one of the corners out of a downhill into an uphill, so I lost quite a bit of time there. But um, yeah, I mean, it was a strong race and I felt really good despite the altitude. And um, I did do some training at altitude in Lavinio for quite a while. So uh, I was well prepared and I was going for it. But um, yeah, that one mistake cost me a lot of time. So the rest of the, the, the race was just a matter of trying to make up that time and just came short, but but, but third is, is pretty good for today. 
That's two podiums in a row. That must make you pretty excited to get to Canada for the next round. Yeah, again, Rita told me she's not going to be in Mount St. Anne's. She told me that we had to shake on it, that I would take it there. So, <laughs> so I look forward to Canada. Emily, thank you very much. Well done today. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Going to be a bit easier for everyone if Gunray Dahl is there, not there, huh? Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Don't understand why she's not there. But anyway, it's her decision, of course, uh, with the European Championships uh, and the World Championships, I guess. Yeah, well coming up. It's of course, which shoots are also really good. So she does probably a different preparation as most of the riders do, and uh, not doing uh, months and then uh, it saves her a lot of time, a lot of energy as well. And uh, watch out for her at the end of the of the season. It's going to be good. Hope Hopefully you can still hear us over the national anthems that have been played as the uh, riders take to the main stage to get their medals for today. Let's have a look at the World Cup standings then now with the points added from today's race. And it's 117 points now. Back to second. It's not that much, but especially when you take into the fact that Langbad usually wins short track and there are 125 points on offer for it. Yeah, I mean, uh, the overall standing, uh, the, the win uh, for the World Cup, that's still wide open. Uh, so uh, it's going to be really exciting till the end of the year. It certainly is well. Plenty more drama here in Andorra. We've got the men's race coming up this afternoon in around an hour's time. I think this is going to be another good one. Someone is bound, uh, half an hour, excuse me. Someone is bound to uh, try and beat you today, aren't they? Yeah, definitely it is. Uh, Avancini, he won the short track last Friday, so he's in a good shape. The Spanish riders are always strong here in Andorra with a lot of fans on the course as well. But to beat Nino, it's going to be a hard one. They're all going to be fired up for this one. OK, stay with us. We'll be back with that. Thank you, Bart. Thank you at home for watching. We'll see you with the men very shortly indeed. Bye till then. See you. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah.